Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Core Theatre, the Sounds of Home world premiere. Um, <laughs> I am Emma, and I was one of the first people on the steering committee for this project way back in 2014. And I've had many a late night conversation with Paula. She's panicked about something or asked my opinion on a poster or whatever it was, and this is my last, well, it's not my last, it's my second to last role as part of this project, uh, was to introduce her. Um, so she's asked me to ask you, please would you turn off your phones? I think we're all well versed in this now. Um, but we are recording it so that we have professional um, sound recording and lots of videos taken, so none of you need to do that. You don't have to watch it through your phone, so if you could turn them off, and she's asked for you to be present and enjoy yourselves. So, without further ado, let me introduce you to Paula Bolton. Good evening everybody, and um, thank you so much for coming. Some of you have travelled an awful long way, and that's very much appreciated to be here on this very special night. It is a night of firsts. We know this is the first performance of the piece. It's also the first time this newly constructed orchestra will ever have played. And I mean that because actually a couple of people were poorly today, so we haven't all played together ever. Um, one of them's just turned up. So thank you, Lucy, for getting off your deathbed. Double bass player. Um, the other first, of course, is this is a debut for one of our own Corby residents. Elio Andrade came from Venezuela. And he was one of my interviewees for this project. And uh, little did I know he was a conductor. So that was a, um, a meeting of minds. And we're thrilled to have him tonight. You'll, you'll see him do his stuff shortly. For me, however, the real first is I know, because I know some of you in the audience, that this is your first ever orchestral experience. And those of us that have been to orchestras or have had orchestra music in our lives for a long time, I don't know if you can remember your first time, but I'd like you to cast your mind back to that awful moment when you want to clap. <laughs> and everybody else is just sitting there and you feel completely foolish. You feel like you don't know that you belong there. And I am a firm believer that classical music belongs to all of us. It is not an us and them game. Now Beethoven can't tell you where he wanted you to clap, but I can, I'm not dead yet. So, um, there are seven movements. If you've got your programmes, there are what you call programme notes. So those of you that are new, normally there's a story written by the composer or by some wise person listening to the music, and it explains how the piece works. But I'm just going to tell you, because it's easier, and you haven't got any lights now. Um, there are several places where you might want to clap, and please do. However... What it's about is, as composers, we've worked long and hard to create a mood or an atmosphere. And we're hoping that you feel that atmosphere too. So if somebody suddenly clapped when it's all spooky, it spoils it. You'll know because there are, after the trumpet solo, we've tried to sew it all together. So it just flows from one to the other. So clap where you like, up until when you hear the trumpet solo. And then please just sit on it till the end. Okay, now the other thing is, as a composer, what was I confronted with? I have an amazing box of colours. This is how I decided to try and explain composing. Um, I might have tunes, rhythms, melodies, whatever, going around in my head. All of those, of course, I collected from the 30 interviewees, many of who are here tonight. And thank you, because without your sharing your sounds of home with me, I wouldn't have had my original palette. However, I could have the same tune played on a clarinet, or a bassoon, or a horn, or a violin, and it would sound different. It would have a different colour. <coughs> so I'm going to introduce you to my box of paints behind me, and I've asked them if they would play little bits um, so that you hear the instruments, and when you hear that sound again, you'll say, yes, that's a bassoon. Now, there's one special person in the audience, um, and that's Max, my great nephew. Uh, he helped me sort out the music right at the beginning. And my living room floor had hundreds and hundreds of sheets of music. I could make no sense of it. I don't do paper. And so 
bless him, he learned all the names of all the instruments in order to be able to put the bass clarinet there and the, the violin too over there. So thank you, Max, for beginning that job. And it's been taken up since then by Kerry, who is our clarinetist. Give us a wave, Kerry. Uh, and her sister, Emma, who's our trombonist, who have spent hours piecing this jigsaw together. Because without the paper, these wonderful musicians don't know what's in my head. Now, I also had to get it out of my head onto paper. And I did that through some software. And those of you who know me know I hate computers. But um, Stuart Sweeney's here somewhere. Uh, Julian Blakeston. I just wanted to do a name check. Julian first introduced me to Sibelius. Thank you, Julian. And uh, Stuart um, helped me along the way and then turned what I'd composed into an electronic version, which some of you might have heard a small part of this uh, in October 2015. Since then, we've discovered that our latest addition to the orchestra has very good connections with Sibelius. So we're all right there then. For software updates, I hope, Douglas. <laughs> there he is. Okay, so um, that's the process. Now, when I've used all of these wonderful instruments, I paint a picture, and I know what I've intended this evening, but I'm not going to tell you what it's meant to mean, because it's up to you to have your own experience. I hope it tells a story, but I'd like to know what your stories were. So if you feel like giving me feedback afterwards and say... This transported me to here, there, or wherever. I am absolutely waiting for that feedback. It would make a lovely book. I've done composition workshops in schools with this, and I'm amazed at what different people have got from the music. But that's the richness of the sounds that we have available tonight. So that's that. I'm now going to introduce you to various things. Um, I spoke to some people from Portugal, Arthur Pereira, community safety officer, and he and his wife, Anna, introduced me to Fado, which is Portuguese um, music. And there was a beautiful song, I'm not a singer, but this theme captured me. La, 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 da, 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 di, da, da, da. And I just loved the way that melody kept stretching and reaching. So I use that as the basis for one of the first themes. And I'm going to ask the viola to play the theme for the waltz, which is what I made of my reaction to that, Karen. This, the third movement is called Samba. And the other thing I have at my disposal is either an individual like that or an entire section. And when we have lots of people playing together, we call that the section. So the second violin section, there are eight of them, and I'm going to play the Samba tune and listen out for those intervals again. But because it's a Samba, I'm going to ask some of the Latin instruments to just busk along, please, um, any of the rhythms you fancy once they get going. In fact... Do you know I'm going to save time? Hold it right there. There's also another rhythm you'll hear a lot, and that was what the Chilean people gave to me. So on the congas instead of the timps, can you give us that rhythm first? And then come in and the please.
joy of the string section is that they don't just play on their own <coughs> or in a section. Can you put your mutes on, please, and do me the lullaby? And I want all of the strings to do that. <coughs> this is um, one of the tunes I got from Lithuania. And in Lithuania, they still sing lullabies to their children. So I can have things played loudly or softly because we do dynamics in classical music. Um, and if we want it really soft, most instruments have a way of muting. So they've put little bits on their bridges now, and you'll hear the sound is much quieter. So uh, we'll do about one. Um, stringed instruments use bows, you've just noticed that, but they also pluck. And uh, pizzicato is the proper term for plucking. And we've got a lot of that going on because it's a very rhythmic suite. So um, can we just have whatever the bit was we did before? What was it? Okay, I'll give you four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> the double bass um, that also does the plucking. We have a tango at some point. Lucy, over to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, um, I would like to just have the El Pueblo rhythm and I want to hear it on the timps and I'd like to hear it on the, uh, just go along the percussion section. So wood blocks, clave, as well, one after, one after the other. And um, this rhythm is the one that the Chilean people um, uh, used to chant, El Pueblo Unido Jamás Será Vencido. And you'll find it in your programme. It means the people united will never be defeated. Listen out for it, it runs throughout the suite. Okay, Gideon, take it away. now. Um, Jason, can I ask you to do the same thing? Now, most of the time, the, the, you know, the brass instruments will be playing uh, a, a kind of walking bass or, you know, some, some bass line, but I've actually given them that rhythm as well. So at some point, you will hear Jason doing... Sorry, I'm talking, I'm forgetting to talk in the mic. <laughs> Sorry, up there, if you've missed all of that. Um, the bass clarinet has got the most amazing sound, and I want Chloe in a cupboard so I can hear this noise whenever, whenever I want. Unfortunately, she's still at school and is going to be a music teacher, so she's far too busy to play bass clarinet whenever I want to hear it. But for tonight, here we go.
and that was the little sister, the clarinet. So we're going to go to the oboe, and uh, then her sister is the, uh, we're going to listen to the oboe de more. So starting with Amelia. And then we'll come to the flutes. But actually, I'm going to stop them because I'm bringing in the tabla here. They don't know what they're doing because I'm doing this improvised. Okay, so bear with us. Um, in the back there, we've got um, some lovely Indian instruments. We've got Mahesh on uh, tabla and next to him, Kirti, who's uh, harmonium and singing. So can you set up the 7-8 rhythm, please? And then you two join in when you want. Okay, I think that's enough teasing. Uh, suffice it to say, those of you who were thinking, what is the sound of home of Corby, might be expecting a bagpipe. <laughs> Unfortunately, we booked the theatre for the 21st of January, unaware of the fact that bagpipers are busy at the moment. Um, most of them are piping in haggis as we speak. Um, and, and unfortunately we weren't piped in this evening, that's what we were going to do. But there is a moment when we acknowledge the, um, the, the particular style of drumming that goes with the bagpipes. So listen out for that as well. And there are some well-known Welsh tunes in there for any rugby fans in the audience. Okay, so without any further ado, I'd like to welcome to the stage this evening's conductor, Elio Andrade.
say, we've never heard that Andy speaks for itself. Thank you, uh, particularly, I'm still crying, <laughs> Corby Silver Band have been doing that for yeah. since 1902. <laughs> that is the sound of home and this wonderful town of Corby is where so many people have chosen to come to. Over 30 nationalities were interviewed uh, in order to make that music and what I invite you to do now is to have a drink and then come back after you know an interval and we'll have a Q&A. The orchestra are there if anybody's got questions about their instruments or if you want to ask the conductor or me, the composer, <laughs> or a couple of interviewees are going to be here. So we can just kind of talk about the project, learn a little bit about it, and then we'll have an encore. So enjoy your break, and thank you for taking part in this truly unique experience. Thank you. Thank you.